there, guys. I'm Morgan Radford, correspondent for NBC News, and I am so excited to have the honor of speaking with Garrett Bradley. Garrett, thanks so much for making the time to be with us. First off, I have to say, this film was, as you can imagine, incredibly timely. What was it like to get involved in this project, and why did you choose to focus on Osaka as the subject? Um, yeah, you know, I, you never really know when things are going to be timely. I guess that's the nature of just life and making documentaries, you know, that the universe kind of sometimes determines the timing for all of that. Um, I mean, I think Naomi, you know, for me, is always a really fascinating young person uh, and, and, and a young leader um, in her field. And I think, you know, for me, one of the biggest kind of both possibilities and excitements and challenges was the fact that she's still so young and has so much ahead of her in her life and and what it means to to make a film with somebody who you know is is I mean we're always continuously evolving and growing but you know when you're younger I think that those changes can can feel even more drastic and so what would it mean to make a documentary with her that really honored the spirit of her um, and honored this moment in her life and didn't in any kind of way try to encapsulate um, things that even she herself and all of us are have yet to see you know do not to not box her in in any kind of way and keep it really open you know it's interesting when she said at the beginning you know that people will try to to box you in uh, and that was kind of what struck me i mean this is a young woman who recently has made it very clear she doesn't want to do some of these more recent media interviews to protect her own space, to protect her own joy and her own health. And yet you had this really incredible, seemingly unprecedented access. What was that like to be with her in these incredibly high moments, incredibly low moments, and just really there through the day to day? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I think that Naomi, she might, um, question herself. She may not feel strong at moments, but at the end of the day, like the person that I saw, you know, and continue to see is an incredibly strong, very solid person whose feet are very much on the ground. And I think that the way in which she moves through the world, which really is from a place, I think, of deep observation and contemplation, from a place of deep listening, um, is really our future. You know, I think our future is about transparency. It's about new um, iconography, new symbolism. It's 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 about how our future is very much connected to um, a certain kind of youth and a certain kind of unscripted way of existing. And she is really at the epicenter of that. And it's not an easy place to be. It's not necessarily a comfortable place to be, but it's clearly her path. Um, and, you know, I just felt continuously privileged to be in a space with her that hopefully would allow me to honor um, her, her brilliance, you know, um, both on and off the court. And also really honor her complexity. One thing I kept thinking about when I was watching the film is how would you describe in one word the mood of that film? <laughs> the mood of the film? Yeah. Um, hmm. It's a great question. I would say, um, I hope it's from the heart, you know, it's from the heart. Um, you know, again, she, she's not a silent person. She's an observational person, you know, she's, she's paying attention. Um, and I think, you know, part of making films is that we, it's, it's an externalized medium, you know, it, it's, it's at its best, it's tapping into subjectivity and, and making it objective to a certain extent, making it something that all of us can connect with. Um, and so, uh, you know, I tried to just let her lead, you know, and, and her heart is what led, led us, you know, um, all over the world. <laughs> How did you manage to weave together, for example, so much of her background and family history? I mean, even when you opened with the clarity of what her father told her about, look, no girl, you know, you had slaves who were on the ship for hours just so you could have this opportunity. How did you, you know, manage to successfully weave together this background and and, and like her current analysis with that? Well, I, I don't think, you know, I mean, I don't think you can separate, you know, to a certain extent her, her present uh, from her past, you know, I mean, I think she's still so young and still so connected um, to her family and to, um, you know, basically to, to the newness of what fame is, um, that I think, you know, those things were so intrinsic to how we were gonna understand how she was moving through space, you know? Um, I think, you know, being catapulted um, to that level at such a young age is incredibly 
challenging in ways that are unprecedented, in ways that are not always explained or articulated to, to a person. And I think, you know, for me, when I think about her fans and I think about um, a lot of young people in the world, I don't think that they always realize the amount of work that it goes into um, being in the position that she's in. And, and so when we see, um, you know, an outward facing, you know, when we see a press conference or we see her speaking publicly, um, I don't think we realize, you know, um, what it takes, what kind of strength it takes um, to be in front of the world. And I think, again, she does that in such a beautiful and graceful way. And she does that by speaking her truth, you know? Um, and I think part of being a leader is taking a chance to speak your truth, whether everyone is gonna accept it right away or not. There were a lot of things that surprised me about this film. For example, I didn't know the depth of her relationship with Kobe. Bryant and the way that he was kind of guiding her. And as she said in your film, you know, giving her this great advice. What surprised you while making the film? Oh, that's a great question. Well, this sounds naive, you know, because I, again, like, you know, going into it, it was really important for me that I actually didn't have a super specific agenda or vision for what the show was going to be. It really needed to come from her truth and from who she was. And and I didn't have the privilege of knowing Naomi before we started making this film. So I really tried to just kind of center myself with where she was again in this moment, you know, because, um, you know, you don't want to make a documentary that defines a person, if anything, I mean, at its best, it just reflects where they are, you know? And I think I was maybe naively really surprised by, um, by all the work, <laughs> you know, I mean, and that it's not just about playing tennis. It's also, you know, navigating sponsorships and, and doing press junkets and, um, you know, and having to hold a lot on your shoulders um, sometimes by yourself, you know, um, when you don't have a lot of people who can necessarily relate um, how she how she finds grounding in all of that, you know, and I think, you know, you mentioned like there were moments that maybe felt sad or uncomfortable. And, you know, I think that, again, that's so much about what our future is, 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 is being able to understand each other you know, and to get past sort of the machine and the facade of everything, not in a way that is overly personal, but that I think uh, allows us to relate to one another on a really human level, which is that as a human and as a young person, um, she is maneuvering through a lot. And again, doing it, I think, incredibly gracefully. And Garrett, may I ask, you know, through the process, what was perhaps the most memorable moment for you? Anything that didn't we didn't see happen that was left on the cutting room floor? Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's always there's always a lot of that. Um, it's always some of the best stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I loved seeing her. Um, I mean, I think her birthday in in Japan in 2019, I think it was. Um, you know, was really great seeing her with her parents. You know, I mean, I think anytime we were kind of with her family, going to Haiti was really incredible. Um, you know, her family has a foundation that's there that really supports the local community. Um, and, and I think in a lot of ways, it's where, you know, she feels especially connected. Um, and, and that was, that was such a, such an honor and, and, and such a pleasure to be able to, to join her and her family on that. Yeah. And Garrett, what do you hope that other people take away from this film? You know, I think, um, I think that at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We're all sensitive human beings. Um, and we all have the potential to be leaders in our community and in our lives and in our world. And that, that doesn't always um, happen easily, but um, in order for us to live our best lives, we have to speak our truth. Um, and we'll be up against a lot of obstacles uh, in, in pursuit of that. But, um, but I think the payoff is, is worth it. Um, and I hope you know people can relate to Naomi maybe more than they have before. They can see her as a full being, as a full, incredible, beautiful young person who has uh, so much more ahead of them. And I guess my final question is a more personal one because you said you were most surprised by the amount of work that went into this for her. 
But what I think a lot of people don't realize is how much work goes into this for you. And frankly, you know, you're living the dream for a lot of people. You're you're in an industry where, you know, it's a passion-based industry where you're getting to do presumably what you love. What would you say to other people who are still trying to make it happen, who want to follow someone big, who they may not have access to, who who want to make their mark and their name in an industry that lights them up? Mm. Well, in some ways, I mean, it starts outside of the industry, you know, the industry can't be the thing that one feels that they need in order to create that change. Um, there's so much change that happens on the ground uh, in a way, right, that isn't always televised, right, as was said. Um, so I think it starts really with with where you're at. Um, and I, you know, I actually just um, was speaking with a bunch of students in Chicago who are artists and, and filmmakers, and they were asking themselves those very same questions, you know, how do I how do I follow my dreams? How do I make a mark in the world? And it really starts, I think, with your local community, with your immediate surroundings and asking yourself, what matters to you in your life? What is it that you want to give to the world? We're not making films. Uh, I'm not making films for, for just the sake of making films. I'm making them because I want to offer something and I want to help make this world a better, more transparent and loving and just place. Um, and the, the films I choose to make are in some way always in alignment with those things. No, oh, I'd say you've already done that. Garrett Bradley, thank you so much for taking the time and for explaining a little bit more about your work. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your time.